So as far as the video, we're part two of Easter in disguise, and we've been talking about the festival of Lent. Uh, just for the video, get part one of Easter in disguise, as this is part two. So what we're looking at the Roman, the Romans, the Roman Church has changed the calendar. So if you're going to use the calendar that is hanging in your office. After the, the, the months that are named after the gods of Rome, check that one out. The titles of the months of our year are Roman gods. Oh, for sure God's going to use that. Really? God the Father said, you should have no other gods but me. And he's going to use a calendar that has other gods. Even the Monday, Tuesday that are named for God, some of them. Man, you got to read and study your Bible and stop being ignorant. Get out of the world. So this change in the calendar for years. Christ's birth, volume one, of this has been changed. Four years. They didn't say plus or minus. I couldn't find that out. This change in the calendar in regard to Easter, here we go, was attended with historical consequences. In the church, the Roman church, came the grossest corruption, oh yeah, and the rankest superstition, oh yeah, what church is that? In connection with the with this the season of Lent. Oh, I'm I'm a born-again Christian. I'm not gonna celebrate Lent, and I advise you not to either. Go back and get volume one. Lent was an evil and an abominable pagan festive that was brought into the church. It was not in the church. It was brought into the church. Originally, even in Rome, Lent was preceding merriment, happiness, joy, be merry, Christmas of the carnival. Carnival. You got to study the Bible, says my friend. I, I, yeah, I'm getting a little. I'm going to throw my duck in a minute. And Christian. I'm not talking about the, the Catholic. I'm talking about there are there are Christian churches that come in the name of Jesus Christ that are just have and are participating in this nonsense of paganism in 2020 and our church we do it and it, there anything wrong with it get this video out to your friends share it like it say hey you gotta listen to this guy grab a duck. Get something soft that you can throw it. Romans 8, 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity, hated, extreme hatred against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. That's not good for carnal of all. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, Paul speaking to the Corinthians, but as unto carnal. Even as babes in Christ. Are you involved in this carnality? What we're studying Lent and Easter? You're a babe in Christ. Grow up. Get yourself some. That squishy peas and carrots and applesauce. By studying the word of God. And then you, you get those, uh, those little bread things. And those little uh, wieners. And then you start taking more solid food in Christ by reading and studying the Word of God. And then one day you can be fulfilled of Christ, grown in Christ, and able to handle meat of the Bible and Christianity. I know you don't understand what I'm saying right now if you're a babe in Christ. But as you study the Word of God, one day, hey, you know what? This idiot one day was speaking. I know what he's talking about now. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3. For ye are yet carnal. 
For whereas there are among you envying, that's carnality, strife, arguments, carnality. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did it say back here? Into the church came the grossest corruption, the rankest superstition, carnal, and division. And are ye not carnal and walk as men? Pagans. First Corinthians 3 4. For while one saith, I am a Paul, and another, I am Apollo, are you not carnal? I'm a Catholic. Well, I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me show you where your church is wrong according to the scriptures. Oh, not my church. Yes, not least you be judged. It's carnal. 2 Corinthians 10 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds now he mentioned carnival the first one I gave you words of the Bible for carnal it's not a good word in the Bible it means you're a baby and you haven't grown up now there's some babies out there who just got saved get yourself into a Bible King James Church that teaches and preaches the word of God as it is without any traditions, without any superstition. Grow up as a baby in Christ. Study the Bible says. Then, there are Christians who are aged and yet they're carnal because they don't want to grow and they are retarded by choice and not by birth. I understand. Listen, if you if you've been born and you have physical disability and all, understand. But there are Christians out there, and there will be Christians who are going to listen to this, and they are carnal and they won't listen, they won't get right because they don't want to. And you're a babe in Christ. You're carnal, and you're retarded. You won't grow. When I, that's what I mean by retard. You won't grow in Christ. Because you want to keep your carnal. You want to keep your carnival activity. You want to keep your face painting. You want to keep your, you know. Hey. You hate me now? Get in the long line. I've got churches that hate me. I've got Christians that hate me. I've got family that hate me. i got... Unsaved to hate me and I got the world that hates me. Marvel not my brain the world hates you. Know that it hated me first Go on Was entirely unknown so let me go back because I, I, I Put in the scriptures there So originally even Rome lent preceding merriment's happiness of carnival Was entirely unknown even when fasting before the Christian Pash was held to be necessary, it was by slow steps in this respect they came to adapt with the ritual of paganism. Socrates again, about AD 450, writes, quote, Those who inhabit the princely city of Rome Fast together before Easter three weeks, accepting the Saturday and the Lord's Day, unquote. So this is Roman. Roman is not Bible. So the worship of Estarte, rising steps were taken to get the hold of the Chaldean Lent of six weeks or 40 days. 40 days of Lent is Chaldean, Babylonian. Hormesides, Bishop of Rome, approximately A.D. 519, declared Lent, or decreed Lent, should be solemnly kept before Easter. 519. This is Dr. Meredith Hanner's Chronographia 
Subjoined to his editions of Ephesus, page 592, London, 1636. It was with the view, no doubt, of carrying out this degree that the calendar was, a few days after, readjusted by Diocesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wasn't there a little over here? Where, where'd the little go? Oh, there he is. Diocesus changed by four years. Here, the Bishop of Rome puts Mr. Little's calendar into effect. So we have tampered not only with the Bible, but we have tampered with the meaning of time and adjustment in the calendar. So don't date the Bible by our January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. September is the ninth month, but septi means 10. October means 10. Octave. Hey. Oh boy, I got that one. I'm just trying, trying to say I messed up. But even the names of the of the months don't match. I know septi. So. And the meaning of the change of the calendar. The worship of Estarte. And her Lent. The Lent that I believe just ended today or yesterday, the Lent that is celebrated in 2020, was a mark around 519 AD for the worship of Estarte's Lent or celebration. And nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It was in Britain, there's Britain again, that the first attempt deserve the new calendar. The difference in the point of time betwixt the Christian posh as observed in Britain by the native Christians and the pagan Easter enforced by Rome at the time of enforcement was a whole month. Comenius quoted by Archbishop Usher Silag page 34 it was only by violence and bloodshed at last the festival of the anglo saxon or chaldean goddess came to supersede that which had been honor or held in honor of christ so they took christ out of and they put in Estarte, Istar, easter so when you call upon Easter, you have replaced the name of Christ. Do you know that? I'm telling you, Easter has no business in the church house. Believe what you will, but what does history say? I'm going to quote that one again. It was in Britain that the first attempt observed the new calendar. The difference in the point of time between the Christian patch, the time when Christians actually celebrate Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. So actually you would have you had Passover the Jewish, you had Easter the Roman, and you had Christians patch. If you're gonna call this time of year something with history called the Christian Pad. Listen, it was observed in Britain by the native Christians. Christians celebrated this time of the year as Pash. And the pagan Easter enforced by Rome. And all this is happening around the time of Passover. At the time of, of for enforcement, calling in the troops, like America's doing with coronavirus today, calling in the troops. Where I just watched a video today where tons of cop cars came into a man's church in Mississippi and blocked the people from going to church on Wednesday night service. Throw the Constitution out the window. It means nothing no more. Enforcement. Roman enforcement for their godless ceremonies, which is in 
supposedly God's churches today, was a whole month. That's Archbishop Unser, page 34. It was only by violence and bloodshed, typical of the Catholic Church, crusades, inquisitions, I'll calm down, at last, the festival of the Anglo-Saxon or Chaldean goddess Estarte, the what I read before, came to supersede, over-challenge, that which had been held in honor of Christ. So Christian Pash has been changed to Easter in honor of Estarte and Istar. And if you use the word Easter in your church service, you have replaced the Christian Pash of Christ for the Roman goddess. I didn't say that. History said that. Don't get mad at me. But you have a free will. I do these videos online so all can hear and you got you can do what you want. You can do right or you can do evil. Some walk down the middle of the road. Some are lukewarm. God said, yeah. Make me sick. I'd rather you be, go ahead, be carnal. Lose your rewards. Or be on fire and get reward. But stop walking down the middle of the road. Right now, you can't sit at the table of Belial and you can't sit at the table of Christ. Peter tried that and Paul rebuked him. Peter was sitting down at the table with a bunch of, with a bunch of uh, Gentiles. And then the Jews came along and Peter got up and left the scene. Paul said, hey. All right, so let's go on. Whew. Call it Pash. That's history. Not Bible. They gave it a time. I mean, they didn't go Passover because even though Paul said the Passover is Christ. But I would not give it the name Easter. And if you heard this video and you listen to this video and you reject this video, you reject history, you reject what, what all has been done by the Roman church and you continue to use Easter, I am telling you in my own personal opinion and that don't mean nothing. You'll stand by wood, hay, or stubble fire at the judgment seat of Christ. And you've shown you don't know history at all. I had to, in my schooling, I had to take the two Babylons. I got an A+. Plus. And yes, the two Babylon, it's a headache of a book to read. And the other one there, uh, Mystery Babylon Mystery. I had to take that in my course, too, to get my doctor degree. I'm Stiley William Hayward, D.D., Doctor of uh, Theology or Ditch Hole Digger, something like that. I had to do the two Babylons, and I had to do Babylon, Mystery Babylon. I don't think many colleges of Baptists and many institutions teach that kind of history. Never have, probably never will. Because churches are going about this nonsense. And it defies the history. And it's Romish. It's carnal. I guess they haven't grown. So. Such the story of Easter. <laughs> that was Lent. We read about Lent. Well, we just done three, four pages of Lent. We haven't even touched Easter yet. You're mad at Lent. <laughs> this is Easter in disguise. I know you hate me, and really I don't care. Have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth? A church that Paul was involved with got angry because he told him the truth. Don't bother me. Because if you hate me for the word of God, you hate me for what is true. Sanctify unto thy word, thy word is truth. Then you are angry with God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told Paul on the road to uh, Damascus, why persecute thou me? You need to calm down. And you need to sit down and say, you know what, I need to read this. You need to sit down and say, I need to go online and get me two Babylons by Hissa. Reverend Alexander Hissa. And I need to study that book. And I think he said Babylon, Mystery Babylon. And you need to study those books. 
I'm glad it was part of my classroom. That's why I don't have Christmas trees. That's why I don't celebrate Merry Christ Mass. That's why I don't celebrate Easter. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up and stop wetting your pants. I mean, get out of your diapers into real panties. Grow up. Study. And I'm giving you scriptures where this is talked about. Called an abomination. So the such is the story of Easter. I definitely lost people that time. The popular observance that still attend to the period of celebration adequately confirmed the testimony of history as its Babylonian character. Well, Sally, what's wrong with having Easter in a Baptist church? It's Babylonian. All right. The hot cross buns of Good Friday, dyed eggs of Pash or Easter Sunday, are all Chaldean Babylonian rites, just as they do now. Things haven't changed. The buns, the hot cross buns, known to by identical name, were used in the worship of the Queen of Heaven. Oh, man. We have hot cross buns on Easter. No, we don't worship Mary. We don't get involved with Catholics. We just have hot cross buns. The history of hot cross buns are related to the Queen of Heaven. Another name, alias Mary. Goddess of Easter. There we go. Esther, Easter, Mary are all the goddesses of this time coming up Sunday. I think it is Easter. Another reason why to get Easter out of your Bible church because it represents by name the Queen of Heaven. As a Bible-believing Christian with the King James Bible, where is the Queen of Heaven? Come on. Book, chapter, verse. Where God doesn't call it an abomination. Because I'll give you the book, chapter, and verse in a moment. As early as the days of Secrops, C-E-C-R-O-P-S, the founder of Athens, that is 1,500 years before the Christian era. This has happened 1,500 years, hot cross buns, before Christ was ever even born. And we do it to the dedication of Jesus. He wasn't born yet. I know what you do. I know what you do. The people of the Old Testament look forward to Jesus on the cross. Now we can have our buns. There it is. Throw my duck. There it is. We can have the pagan rituals found in the Old Testament if we say they're looking forward to Jesus on the cross. Let's have our hot cross buns. There it is. There it is. You heard it. This is not my word. This is, I'm going to give you some books. I'm going to give you the name of the author and his books. Yeah, you better believe I'm excited. I'm excited that Christians are so stupid. Or Paul says, ignorant. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be. If you're going to be involved with this stuff, you're going to be ashamed before the judgment seat of Christ. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to. That's okay. And if I'm wrong by chance, well, then I get wood, hay, or stubble. Gets me mad. One species of the sacred bread, says Bryant in his book Mythology, Volume 1, 9, 373, which used to be offered to the gods, small g, O, D, S, 
was a great iniquity called bun or bond b-o-u-n we may get the word bun from that i didn't look it up i should have diogenes lartus speaking of this offering made a made by m Prothesius, E M P E D O C L E S, talking about the buns, describes the chief ingredients of which is composed, saying, He offered, quote, this is a quote, he offered one of the sacred, sacred cakes called bun, B O U N, which was made of flour and honey, L A E. R T I T U S page 270 227 B. Now let me give you Bible. Jeremiah 7 18. The children gathered wood. The fathers kindled the fire. King James. The women needed their dough to make quick cakes. The women needed those to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, King James. Jeremiah 7 18 and to pour out their drink offerings unto other gods small g o d s to that they may provoke me god to anger are you involved with hot cross buns christian you are provoking god to anger worshiping the queen of heaven jeremiah 7 18. now i didn't say that the bible and history said that and I gave you the names, I gave you the scriptures. Don't get mad at me. You're getting mad at God. Get down in your knees and repent before the Lord Jesus Christ. Jeremiah 44, 19. And when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and poured out our drink offerings unto her, and did we make her cakes to worship her, That's the hot cross buns that will be so popularly made in stores and you can buy them. And I'm a man that loves bread. I'm out here. Right. You want to do the eggs now? Use my duck. Yes, give me some eggs. I want to know about eggs. <laughs> you were going to throw me. All right, eggs. So we have the eggs. Are you ready for the eggs? I don't know how many people I lost to get to the eggs, but the origin of the Pash eggs is clear. Now we're going to see that this time of Pash, it does have paganism. Why can't we just call it the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Or call it the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Or call it what the Bible word is? The day of the gospel. Some people call it Resurrection Sunday. I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't see anything. I mean, he didn't die on Friday. It's impossible three days and three nights, but that's a whole different other story. I think I've done that once I'm not sure. I've done so many wet cloths. Wet cloth on Valentine's Day, wet cloth on birthdays. So the ancient Druids, here they are again. If we're involved with the Druids, throw it out. Bore an egg as a sacred emblem of their order. Davries, D-A-V-I-E-R, in his book Droids, page 208. In Dioecius, or mysteries of Bacchus as celebrating Athens. All right, let's get some Bible. Acts 17 16, all King James. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw that the city wholly given to idolatry. Can you think of a church that has idolatry? No. Acts 17 22. Then puts Paul stood on the midst of Mars Hill. 
that's a god, Mars. And said, ye men of Athens, there we are, there we are. I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. That's the two places in the Bible where Athens shows up, and that's not good. And we have now the egg of Easter. And it comes from the Druids, and it comes from Athens. That Paul says, given to idolatry and superstition, which are the classifications of one Romish church. One part of the nightly ceremony consists of a consecration of an egg. Ibid, page 207. I don't know what that Ibid stands for. I-B-I-D. I see that quote in many books. Right? Consecration of an egg. The Hindu fables celebrate their Monday egg of gold color. Colonel Kennedy, page 223. The people of Japan make their sacred egg to have a brazen. Coleman, page 340. In China, as they're at this hour, he writes, dyed or painted eggs are used on sacred festivals, even as in this country, Reverend James Johnson of Glasgow, formerly missionary at Amoy, A M O Y, in China. Oh, China's giving us coronavirus. China's giving coronavirus. We can't trust China. Color your eggs, kitties. Came from China. You know, China does not allow Christians to preach on the street. They do not allow church services openly. They do not allow the Bible. And your colored eggs come from a nation that rejects God outright and his word and his son. And what's wrong, Sally, with painted eggs? Study to show thyself approved unto God. Workman that needs not to be ashamed. In ancient times, eggs were used as religious rites of the Egyptians. How many times are they coming up? How often did God warn Israel, don't go back to Egypt? Don't get horses out of Egypt. Don't get wives out of Egypt. Don't go to Egypt. The Passover night was the night that the Jews came out of Egypt. God redeemed them under the blood. And Greeks. Oh, Greeks. And we're hung up. Hung up for mystic purposes in their temples. Willison, Volume 3, page 20, and Panasas, P-A-U-S-A-N-I-A-S, Lib 3, Laconic, L-A-C-O-N-O-I-C-A, Cap 16. Now, some of you are going to reject what I'm doing. Because, oh, he can't pronounce those names. I know the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior, and God knows my name. I'm a child of God trying to teach the truth. From Egypt, these sacred eggs came to be distinctly traced to the banks of the Euphrates. Do you know where the Euphrates is? And what is by the Euphrates? A nation? The classic poets are all full of the tales of the mystic egg of the Babylonians. There it is. There's your answer. Hygienus, Egyptian, learned leader of the Palatine Library at Rome. Quote, An egg of wonderful's, wondrous size is said to have fallen from heaven. All right, I'm going to end the quote here for a moment and quote the little Bible. King James. Acts 19.35, and when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how the city of Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and the image that which fell down from Jupiter? That's the Bible coming from heaven. So let's go back to the quote 
wonderful size is said to have fallen from heaven into the river Euphrates. The fishes rolled it to the bank. You got a little evolution going on here. Fishes rolling an egg. When the doves. Oh, there is the dove. There's the Holy Spirit. There it is. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, not a dove. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word. I'm having fun. Where the doves have settled upon it and hatched it. Out came Venus. Yeah, my ducklings ever became Venus. Ooh. Glad I got a duck. That's a peanut stuck, my dog. We have Venus from your eggs. Women are, are from Venus and men are from Mars. What's that? that group of women from outer space? Venus, I'm your Venus. We're talking about the egg right now. You're, you're colored Easter eggs. You know the eggs that yet your church will color and you'll go hide them so your kids can go look for them on the church grounds? We're in the sex worship now. Eggs brings about babies and bunnies. You know what you're doing? When you are having an egg hunt at your church, you're supposed to be Christ and Christian. You know what the, the operation you're doing in the realms of sexuality? You are sending your children as sperm looking for an egg. Is that not what looks for an egg? Sperm? Is that not the mode of sex? Okay, kiddies, we had an egg, so you go find it. So you send your children, you send your sperm out to go look for eggs in the in the fields or in the property of the church. You have now partaken in your church, whatever church you are, whatever you believe, you have now taken part in the sexual worship of sperm looking for an egg in the egg hunt on Easter, Estar. Have you ever seen the image and and the statues of Estar, she's got boobies. And they look like eggs, but they're not eggs. The milk of life. Google Estar, I-S-H-T-A-R, under images. You'll see eggs or bare breasts. That's your Easter goddess. Estar, Easter in disguise but you won't do it all right so where was i venus who afterwards was called the syrian goddess hygienus f-a-b-u-l-o-e page 148 and 149 so let's re let me read that again the fish rolled the, rolled it to the bank the egg when the doves had settled upon it and hatched it out came venus who afterwards was called the Syrian goddess. That is, and I gave you the, I gave you the book, and pay, that is Estar, Estarte. Hence the egg became one of the symbols of Easter. The egg that brought that brought forth, I'm your Venus, a female. And gee, what goddess is not a god of Easter, it's a goddess of Easter. Esther, the queen of heaven, Mary. That's what the Catholic car. So the, the occult mean of this psych mystic. Now I got the de I'm not gonna read the definite, it's just too long. I'm gonna read it. 
I got the definition of mystic. Involving or characterized by obscure, uh, otherworldly, or symbolic practices or content. A certain religious ceremony and art. Spiritually significant. Otherworldly of nature or pertaining to mysteries known only to the initiated. Mystic rites or cult character. Power and significance and mystic formula. Of the obscure or mysterious character or significance. A person who claims to attain or believes in possibility of attaining insight into mysteries transcending or ordinary human knowledge as directed communication with divine or immediate intuition in a state of spiritual ecstasy and a person initiating religious mysteries dictionary.com that's mystic let me give you some more bible leviticus 19:31. regard not them that have familiar spirits Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 20 verse 6. The soul that turns after such as a familiar spirit and after wizards to go out whoring after them. I will set my face against that soul and will cut him off among his people. Deuteronomy 18 10 to 12. There shall not be found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. We read about that. Remember Lent? Remember Lent? That, that woman described that festival back here? Letting the children pass through the fire? Remember? Lady Bird Friend Tower, a person said, and I quote, every year at Bethlehem at the 1st of May, number of men and women assembled at the ancient Druidical Circle stones on her property near Sheriff. They light fires in the center. Each person puts a bit of cold cake in the shepherd's bonnet. They all sit down and draw a blindfold, a piece of that bonnet. One piece has been previously blackened. And whosoever gets that piece has to jump through the fire. What did I read here? Who make his son, his son or his daughter pass through the fire or uses divination or zerb times or a chanter or a witch or a charmer or consulter of familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all these, for all that do these things are abomination of the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God does drive them out before thee. Second Kings 21 6, and he made his son pass through the fire. I'm not reading this stuff about Easter and Lent and all that. It's not science fiction. Even God wrote through the Holy Spirit about these times. He made his, far, his son pass through the fire in observed times, used enchantments, dealt with familiar spirits and wizards. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. We're talking about the Easter egg now. It angers God. But I like it. And I like it as a destruction of hell. So the cult meaning of this mystic. Egg of Astarte. There she is again. Venus. Queen of Heaven. Mary. Esther. Easter. Babylonian. Roman. Egyptian, the Druid, in one of his aspects, and there's twofold implication. Now, you gotta listen to this. I never knew this. I don't know how I missed this when I went to school. Had reference to the ark, the flood. This is Bryant, volume three, page 161. During the time of the flood, in which the whole human race were shut up. Eight is not the whole. Now he now he's quoting what they say. The whole human race wasn't shut up. It was eight people in that ark. As the chick is enclosed in the egg before it's hatch. I'm a duck, but I want to listen to this. Yes, I'm mocking. 
If any be inclined to ask, how could it ever be in the minds of men to employ such a symbol for such a purpose? The answer is first, the sacred egg of paganism. As already indicated, the mundane egg in which the world was shut up. Now, let me go back. Let's look at that mundane egg. Uh, let's see, the, the Hindu fables separate the Monday egg as gold color. Colonel Kennedy. The people of Japan make the sacred egg to be brazen. Coleman. In China, the hour right now to this day dyed and painted eggs used in sacred festivals. Reverend James Johnson. The Egyptians and the Greeks had this mundane egg. Today, we color those eggs. Well, not me. Carnal Christians color the eggs. And they call it Christian, and it's not. It's Estar Day. It's Venus. It's paganism. Egyptian. And Babylonian. Romish. It symbols gods and goddesses. That rolled into the, the, the Euphrates River and a dove sat on it and gave birth to Venus. And I'm telling you, if you're a Christian saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and you're involved in this mess, you are in great error. Look at the facts. Look at the Bible. Don't look at me. Look what I'm reading. I'm giving you the books. I'm giving you the men. I'm giving you the scriptures. I'm giving you historical facts. The world seen shut up in an egg and floating on the water, it may not be difficult to believe. That's what the Egyptians believe. However, the, the idea of the egg may come that the egg thus floating on the wide universal sea might be Noah's family that contained the whole world in its bosom. So it wasn't God that that saved Noah and his family and all the, the animals. It was this egg. The egg of Venus. I'm your Venus. Men are from Mars and women are from Estar. Estarte. Easter. Mary. Now let me, let me, it says that the egg floated. Life floated from this egg. Let me give you a little fact here I looked up. If the egg sinks to the bottom, if you want, if you want to know if your eggs are good, Put them in a glass of water. If the egg sinks to the bottom and lay flat on its side, it's still fresh. However, if they sink but stand on one end of the bottom of the glass or bowl, they're not as fresh but still edible. And of course, if the egg floats, now we're looking at this mundane egg that floated. If it floats to the top, they shouldn't be eaten. I've never known to have anybody eat Easter egg. Now, maybe somebody does. Man. So the application of the word egg equals ark. And that's where they take it. I mean, he built the ark out of wood. <laughs> Uh, the, the shell of an egg, I know one of the parts is calcium. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of world life stories of, of a man and his family and animals that got into something and floated on top of, you know, uh, God's wrath. That, that story is worldwide. So the eggs float in on the waters of a deluge or flood with the elements of the new world in its bosom. The coming of the egg from heaven, as the Egyptians believed, so all life comes from an egg. It evidently refers to the the uh, the preparations of the ark. By the express appointment of God. The, the same thing is clearly implied by the Egyptian story of the mandate egg. 
God sent his egg down, and it landed in Euphrates River, and the fish rolled the egg over, and the doves came down and laid on the egg, and Venus was born. You believe that nonsense? Let me go sell you a bridge somewhere over the River Kwai, or I don't know what. It said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and there was no egg. God don't, which came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't know. What? The chicken. Really? Because God don't lay eggs. The question that has puzzled man throughout years, I gave it in. God don't lay eggs. Oh, these Egyptians. So, I'm having fun. Which is said to have come out of the mouth of a great God. So that story we read about the Egyptian, you know, the egg came down in the Euphrates River and then fish rolled in it. It is said by the Egyptians to conclude that story, it came from the mouth of a great God. Bunces, volume 1, page 377. Eggs don't come out of a mouth. They come out of the butt. In that area. The doves resting on the egg gives no clarification. Where they got the doves from, I don't know. So, everything that was good or beneficial to mankind was represented in the Chaldean, Babylonian, mysteries. As in some way, you know, Babylonian mystery, mis Babylon, Babylon mystery, Babylon. That's a book that needs to be read by many Christians today. They're seriously lacking on church history as in some way connected to Babylonian goddess not God goddess so the greatest blessing to the human race which the ark contained in its bosom was held to be Estarte who was the great civilizer and benefactor of the world so according to them for God so loved the world that he gave Estarte According to them, I'm not changing the Bible. They completely deny the fact is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, male, Jesus Christ. Are you involved with this egg? Easter eggs, S-star eggs, Venus eggs. You are denying Jesus Christ. The Romish church, the Catholic church, adapted this mystic egg Estarte and consecrated it as a symbol of Christ's re resurrection. What on earth are you talking about? Are you telling me that Christ suffered and died and they buried him inside of an egg? I grew up, uh, there was a television program. I don't know if you remember, Mork and Mindy. That's old. And he came down from, I forget what the. He came from outer space in an egg. The most ma filthy mouth comedian that rejected God outright. So, the resurrection symbols the egg. Where did that come from? It came from the Roman Catholic Church. That's where it came from. How many Baptist churches out there? Oh, the egg is. You're wrong. The form of prayer was even appointed to be used in the connection with it, Pope Paul V. There's no hope in the Pope. I don't listen to any Pope. But look, he teaches the superstitious thus to pray at Easter. Now here's the pray prayer for the egg. Before you put egg in hot water, no. Bless, O oh Lord, we beseech thee, this thy creature of eggs, that it may become wholesome substance unto thy servants, eating it in the remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. You hear that word, sustenance? 
I grew up as a Polish Roman Catholic. If there's any Catholics that are, are, are Catholic, they're Polish. Most of your, your popes are Polish. You know what that substance is? That is when that idiot takes the wafer and the booze and he says, Ocus Pocus and eat him up, don't eat him out, and all other kind of words you don't understand. And he transformed that bread and that wine into the literal body of Jesus, the literal blood of Jesus. You ask any Catholic that knows anything, they will say, yes, that is the literal body and blood, literal, literal, literal body, blood of Jesus Christ. That word substance, that's the same word used at the Mass. As the egg. Mary Christ Mass. We're in Easter. You know what the typical days when Astarte, Ishtar, or Easter, you know what happens if she has her eggs fertilized on Easter? There are some years that in nine months later, you celebrate the birthday of Tammuz, December 25th. We're going to read about that in a moment. We're coming up to that after the egg. Easter is a time that Tammuz has been fertilized in Estar. To come up to another name. And then December 25th is when Tammuz is born. Not Jesus Christ. So we have 2 Corinthians 11.4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, Paul, if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, talking to Christians, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Okay, that's done with the egg. Now we talked about the Queen of Heaven. And let me tell you, the Queen of Heaven, Roman Catholic. Man, I grew up Roman Catholic. I don't know how far. I gave up when I was a teenager, thank God. And as a good Roman Catholic that I was, the Queen of Heaven is Mary. So let's read about the Queen of Heaven. Beside the mystic egg, there's another emblem of Easter. The goddess. Let me tell you something I said that. Goddess. Not the male Christ Jesus. Not the man Christ Jesus. Not the son of God Jesus. The goddess queen of Babylon. Here we go again. That was the rimen or pomegranate. And with the rimen or pomegranate in her hand, she frequently represented an ancient metals and the house of Rimen, in which the king of da Damascus, the master Naaman, this is in your Bible, the Syrians worship was all likelihood the temple of Astarte. The goddess with Rimen was publicly adorned. 2 Kings 5.18 and thus the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my, this is a uh, name it. He's, he, he, got baptized, he got baptized seven times. He's praising God. He has no more leprosy. And he comes up to Elijah. He goes, I want to worship God, but I got to worship this rimming God, the king of Damascus. And if you will pardon me, whether my master goeth into the house of Rimmon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself inside the house of Rimen. When I bow down myself in the house of Rimen, the Lord pardon thy servant. And say, I've got to do this before the king, Naaman said. And God's, and he's asking Elijah, will God pardon me? What was later this house of Rimen spoken about the Bible? What was it named to be after? Estarte. What is Estarte associated with? Easter. <clears throat> what does a Gentile in the Bible, 2 Kings chapter 5, say? I got to go in that house. Will, will, will you have God pardon me? Naaman got away from Estarte. Baptist churches have not today. I don't care what Catholics and Lutherans are. I, I care about the Baptists. The pomegranate is a fruit that's full of seeds. Now, on the account it has been supposed, 
Well, I guess I gotta stop this right here. I gotta take a break. We stay live. I gotta stop.